Hello, welcome to Thrive Groups. We're glad to have you with us this week, and we are going to jump right in, but first we're going to go over a couple of our uh, rules for our groups. Pretty simple. The first is that everyone participates, no one dominates. We want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to share your thoughts, your stories, your ideas, and that nobody just like dominates every single question. You know, it's easy to do that. Some of us have a lot of stories, but hey, make sure we let other people have an opportunity to share too. Second is that we start on time, we end on time. So after the group is over, hang out for a few minutes if you want, but let's stay respectful of the location that we are in and end on time. So we're gonna jump right in with our icebreaker question, and it's this, what is something most people don't know about you? What's something most people don't know about you? I got a lot of different things, uh, let's see. Um, I'll pick up, how about this one? that I had a business. I started my first business when I was 16 years old and it was a t-shirt printing business where we would, it was silk screening. So, you know, we'd make the, the screens and do all that stuff. I had a, a shop set up, did a lot of jobs over the years and probably had it for about four or five years, something like that, I ran the business. But that was my first, first adventure in any kind of business. So how about you? What is something that most people don't know about you? Okay, we're going to read a section of scripture here. This is Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. And this is the account of the paralytic man who was lowered down through the roof. So we're, I'm going to read it, and then we're going to chat about whatever stands out to you in this verse. So here we go. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on the mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? Or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, We've never seen anything like this before. So, let's take a few moments and discuss anything that maybe stood out to you as you read this verse. Okay, here's a question that we'll ask is this. Share about a time that you didn't give up. For me. Several years ago, I decided that I was going to make a movie, a kids movie, a short kids movie. And uh, and, and it was a ton of work. Uh, we shot the movie and um, then it was the editing process. And we shot the whole thing probably in about a weekend, but the editing took over a year and a half. Hours and hours and hours of editing and fixing bad footage. In the end, it's not going to win any awards, but we finished it. And sold some copies of it too. But uh, but that was something that, you know, I didn't give up. You know, I was committed to taking this through to completion. How about you? Share about something that you did, you started, and you didn't give up on it. Next question here is, have you ever helped bring someone closer to Jesus? Well, for me, I mean, clearly I, I'm a pastor, so a lot of what I do is all centered around that. But a personal thing is, is with my arm wrestling friends and I've had numerous opportunities to pray with them, to invite them, to, to be there uh, in difficult times, even to perform funerals at times as well. So it was an opportunity for me to help bring someone closer to Jesus. But how about you? Have you ever been able to help someone get closer to Jesus, maybe through an invitation, a prayer, a conversation, a Bible study, whatever it may be. Let's take a few moments and discuss that. Last question is this, what way has Jesus transformed your life? Well, for me, there's a lot of ways, but 
One specific was that many years ago, I was going through a little bit of an identity crisis, I suppose. Uh, very, very depressed and discouraged, not really sure what God was calling me to do or leading me to do. And, and I was just going through it. And, you know, it was, it was tough. And I felt very stale in my faith. And through that time, I felt God inspire me to get into his word more regularly, spend more time praying more regularly, spend more time listening to his voice. And I began to do those things. And it was not an immediate thing, but it was over a period of time through doing it day in and day out, having consistency that God began to transform my life, draw me closer to him and allow me to operate with power that I'd never uh, previously been able to. So how about you though? What way has Jesus transformed your life? Okay, we're going to wrap things up here. Thank you for coming today. We really are so glad that you're here. And we're going to take a few moments to pray together. I believe there's power in prayer and there's power in prayer together. So we're going to open things up. And I would encourage each of you to take a few moments and pray. It doesn't have to be fancy. Say a few words. Then, you know, in Jesus' name or amen or whatever, then the next person will get the idea. And, uh, and let's each take a few moments to pray. And then the leader can close it up. So again, thank you for coming. Let's take these few moments and close in prayer.